tend to be where the light and darkness meet on the edge of the horizon through the trees i am a narcissist crippled with self-doubt i've got a courage that brings me to my knees i'm equal parts Hello, hi and howdy. How's everybody doing today? I certainly hope everyone's doing well. If you're new here, welcome. If you are a return visitor, as always, welcome back. If you get anything out of this content, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. Also, please excuse my voice. My allergies are kicking my tail. I did a story back in October regarding Elena Humbry and her mother, Erica. I told everyone I would keep them updated, and we now have an update. And looking at a motion that was filed to the court, it was filed by defense attorney Gregory Colson and the assistant public advocate Emily Croucher. It's a large update. In the story, I mentioned that if anyone wanted to know who the six men were that allegedly essayed baby Elena, um, that they could check two Facebook groups, Justice for Elena or Elena's Army, because I said without being able to verify, I was not going to say their names. I was asked why several times, and well, ladies and gentlemen, this is why. Please bear with me as I'm reading quite a bit to you all as I'm learning a lot of this myself, but I wanted to get it out there. Erica was in court today via Zoom from the Bourbon County Jail. Her microphone was muted, however, so she was quiet. They were in court due to the defense motioning to have the death penalty removed from the table. The motion was argued in front of the bail circuit judge, Keith Nagel. There were some pretty serious allegations made about the handling of this case by Lisa Fugate, and they even accused her of using this case for political gain as she was running for circuit judge. Entered into the evidence was Facebook comments made concerning the case by Lisa Fugate. Now, I do not know if Kentucky has any laws against a prosecutor speaking on a case while the investigation is ongoing, but it does seem like a strange thing to do to do it on Facebook. In one post, a lady commented that's great and all, but what about the men who were essaying and abusing her? Lisa responded, unfortunately, the DNA results are not back yet. They expect them anytime, and I completely expect additional arrest then. In another post, someone asked, what about the rest of the guilty people involved? Where's their charges? To which Lisa responded, DNA was expedited, but no specific return date. These results could come back any day now, though. Another lady asked, curious, will the mother not state who the men are? To which Lisa responded, no. She further commented, and just like that, you cheer me up, she deserves far worse than any sentence I can give her. Now, keep in mind, in the last video, I told you that um, they were claiming that the DNA evidence could take a year to return. And it was not just Lisa Fugate, as the um, Bell County Sheriff's Office said the same. The motion further said that in an indictment charges, the intentional cause of death of Elena by failure to render aid. It further said that the word intentional was shoehorning the word intentional to make the case eligible for the death penalty. It said that Lisa had taken to social media during her campaign to comment on her intention to go for the death penalty under a defective indictment. It was during the backdrop of the rumors and accusations that Erica permitted her child to be essayed by multiple men. The motion said the post about the DNA results are coming and arrests would be made, and it was posted on the 23rd of August in 2023. However, the defense contends that the DNA results were already available in August when she made the post, and she did not disclose it. They were issued on the 16th of August in 2023 per the defense. What wasn't disclosed per the defense was that the results for the genetic material indicate a complete absence of male DNA on or in the child. Further said was simply stated that there's zero evidence that the child was essayed by any person, let alone that Erica permitted or solicited it. Curiously, the Commonwealth has not yet seen fit to publicly or proudly announce these facts, end quote. They argued that the defense stated they filed a motion to compel the Commonwealth to allow the lab testing of DNA to be preserved 
for the defense to have independent testing done without the prosecution standing over their shoulder. Lisa said that the concern is that it would raise huge red flags regarding the chain of custody, but them seeing the results is not a problem. She said the problem would be them seeing them without some type of guidance to protect the integrity of the evidence. Judge Nagel ordered the defense has the right to examine the evidence without the Commonwealth or its agents present, but denied the section of the motion that it would be done without supervision. He said there must be an evidence custodian present. It is further alleged in the motion that immediately following what they called the defective indictment against Erica, the defense filed a motion for bill of particulars requesting the court to direct the Commonwealth to state the theory of intentionally rather than wantonness of a result, as well as the basis of culpability for the charges that accompany it. That motion was made on the 5th of September in 2023. The first part of the indictment that they're questioning is the fact that Erica is charged with first degree unaliving of Elena, claiming she intentionally caused the passing of Elena. What is described, however, is wanton homicide per the defense, but that wouldn't have left her eligible for the death penalty. The time frame is further questioned. There is a time frame of a 27-day window in which crimes are suspected to have occurred. Another issue was that the indictment claims someone other than Erica CA'd Elena, and Erica failed to report it. Yet, there is no claim as to who the other person is. The indictment further charges Erica with criminal CA in the first degree, and again, the 27-day window leaves no specification of when or what she did. Without these being specified, it makes it hard to prove or disprove the allegations. The defense claims that Lisa ignored the order for the Bill of Particulars. They further said that the Commonwealth has created a spectacle of a tragedy and then continually refused to comply with the court order. The defense questioned the legal integrity of the prosecution. They further added a post Lisa had made on Facebook, which included a photo of the indictment. She posted on Facebook with the photo, I had the privilege of presenting the case against Erica Lawson to a Bell County jury. I am proud to say Erica Lawson now stands charged with first degree unaliving of her 17-year-old daughter. This post was made on the 22nd of August, so also after the DNA results were issued. Judge Nagel gave the defense and the prosecution 20 days each to respond to the motion itself and stated there is nothing for the court to decide right now as far as discovery. He scheduled a pretrial hearing for Wednesday, the 20th of March in 2024 at 9 a.m. Lisa Fugate said that she will continue to pursue the death penalty and her team will respond to the motion. She said, quote, this is a child, a 17-month-old, that was unalived at the hand of the individuals. Whoever comes to light will be fully prosecuted. And in this specific case right now, we have the mother, Erica Lawson. She meets the qualifications for the death penalty. She meets the mitigating circumstances we filed in the notice. We will not voluntarily withdraw that. In reference to the claim she didn't disclose the DNA results and that no male DNA was on the remains of Elena, Lisa said, quote, Testing is not complete on that, and that's absolutely untrue. There's actually been, I want to say, four male DNA, what we call buckle standards, DNA standards, in order to compare that DNA that's pending right now, end quote. She also said any additional arrest in the case will depend on the remaining DNA results. I'm not aware of what's going on in Bell County right now, but she posted on Facebook on a page, Vote for Lisa L. Fugate, Bell County Circuit Court Judge page, congratulations to Keith Nagel, our new Bell County Circuit Court Judge. My hope for you is that you will lead this county into a future of law and order, and safety for our babies. Thank you to everyone who voted for me. You refused to buy into the lies and the dirty politics, and for that I am thankful. To Sarah Green, I pray for you. The public has seen your lies and unchristian antics. 
I hope someday you overcome your jealousy and hate you have and find peace in your life. With that being said, do not mention my children again. As to Mike Taylor, I hope you are ready for the next election. You chose to play dirty politics in an election you weren't even running in, so when you register for Commonwealth's attorney election, be ready. The only difference is the things that I will post concerning you will be true, end quote. While reading the motion from the defense that the DNA is complete and the response from Lisa Fugate that the DNA isn't complete, but we saw the report, I don't know what to believe. What do you all think? I thought it would be very irresponsible of me not to post this update as if any innocent person is accused of something. And I am not saying anyone is innocent or guilty. I'm just saying that if... I don't want to cause them more pain than the accusations already have. This is also why I'm I'm sure many of y'all have heard me say I really don't like to do unsolved cases because you just never know. When most of the time, uh, when things appear one way, they're not that way. So I just wanted to get that out there. And ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the update to the story of Elaine. When more information is available, I will absolutely update you all. It will most likely be at least March, as that's when the next scheduled court date is. So, if you get anything out of this content, please remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you have any case suggestions, please send them to me at Jenny period, Elisa period, discusses at gmail.com. And until the next video, toodles. I am equal parts, sacred and profane.